Would you spend a night alone in a capsule hotel in Japan? It's Lucy and I'm very excited to share this video with you because I've been sitting on it for a little while now. So last year I traveled to Japan. So the first portion of my trip I spent traveling solo, filming some content which you may have seen already. And the second portion of the trip was spending time with my mum and it was her first time in Japan so that was really special. And then my mum was heading back to Australia but I was continuing on to keep traveling in South Korea. So as it often does with travel it did come down to some logistics. Option A, I move hotels within Tokyo and spend one more night there knowing I have a early morning flight and it was going to be the start of golden week which is known to be very very busy and could potentially become a logistical nightmare. Option B I leave Japan and my mum early to fly to South Korea early and wait for my boyfriend to arrive the next day. Or a mystery silly third option is going to the airport with my mum and then hanging around there overnight doing bits in the airport and going to a capsule hotel for the first time. What do we think kids? What do you think Lucy picked? Option three? Yes! So my mum and I checked out of our lovely hotel in Ginza and we hopped on the train to Narita Airport. And once my mum was safely checked in and through security on her way back to Australia, I made my way to Nine Hours Narita Airport, which is a capsule hotel in, yep, Narita Airport, it, it is in the name. Now it did take me a hot second to find it. Normally I find navigating in Japan, especially in Tokyo, really easy, except for certain train stations, which can be a little tricky. But basically the access to the hotel was through the underground section of the airport where like the trains connect. So it's not that hard to find. I think just depending on how you enter the airport, or like which terminal of the airport or area you start at, it might be a little bit out of the way, but there are signs. And once you see those signs, you're fine. Now I've never really had much reason to stay in Capsule Hotel, although I will say they've always kind of intrigued me because usually when you're traveling with other people, it doesn't really make much economic sense to stay in a Capsule Hotel because I believe the price that I paid for one night in the nine hours Narita Airport Capsule Hotel was around 90 Australian dollars, which when you can stay in a full hotel room for like 100, $110, if you're traveling with another person or if those extra luxuries like having a private bathroom or a little bit of extra space is worth the extra 10, 20 dollars to you. There are a lot of times where capsule hotels don't necessarily come out on top in the, you know, decision making process. But there is something about them, like the concept is just sort of like futuristic. And when the stars align in terms of price, convenience, accommodation, availability in a particular area that you need to be because you maybe have to get on a flight very early in the morning. But you know, sometimes the stars align and in my case they did. And I feel like I sort of knew what to expect. I've definitely watched quite a few. I stayed in a capsule hotel videos in my time. So here I am finally checking it off the list by checking in to the capsule hotel. But before we continue the capsule hotel adventures, I want to thank this video's sponsor, Zenpop. Zenpop is a Japanese stationery box that delivers high quality stationery from Japan to you. So even if you don't have return flights to Japan in your near future, you can still get a curation of high quality Japanese stationery brands with a different theme every month. And if you're signing up now, then the next box you'll receive is the Bizarre Stationery Box, which is actually so fun because they have specifically filled it with stationery that is very unique and bizarre. With my personal favorites from this box being the Mogu Mogu Zoo Desk Clean from Sunstar, which is a little desk pet that will help you keep your desk clean. New family member. And this pastel mechanical pencil, which extends the graphite by you shaking it. Of course, there's plenty of other slightly unhinged stationery in this box. Even special items like these clips, which had over an hour line to purchase them at Japan's Stationery Expo. So you're really getting some of the most sought after stationery that there is. So if you love the look of this box, then you can start with the Zenpop subscription. But if you want to give Zenpop a try without the commitment, with free shipping and no subscription, then they are running a special promotion until the end of August, which is their starter box where you receive one of their previously curated boxes. So if you've been kind of pondering and thinking about trying some of this beautifully curated stationery, but you're not ready for the commitment, then that special option is there for you until the end of August. If you sign up for Zenpop, you can use my code LucyLivin to save on your order, or you can click the link in the description box below. Thank you again to Zenpop for sponsoring this video and supporting the channel, and let's head back to Japan. So we're checking into the hotel. I have my big old suitcase, and I think at this point it was around four o'clock in the afternoon, and my flight wasn't until like, eight, nine o'clock the next morning. So I had time for shenanigans. I mean, look, I always have time for shenanigans, but like by this, I mean like I really, I really had time. Checking was quick and easy and they gave me a key to my very nice and sizable locker along with a tote bag, which had 
little bit of capsule swag. The locker had plenty of space for me to put my suitcase and also had a pair of slippers inside because you are meant to change out of your normal shoes into the slippers, which is not irregular for accommodation in Japan just generally. But other than it's just kind of like a general custom for this casual hotel, it was also really handy for making sure that you're not making as much noise. More on that. It also had some hangers so I could hang up, you know, my outfit, had space for like me to pop my tote bag, like really ample space. And I've set up like a locker room. There had a big bench in the center. So if you needed to like open your suitcase or do anything like that, you had the ability to. So I popped my stuff away. I changed into my slippers and it was in this kind of like little locker area that's right near the entrance where people could have a chat with their traveling companion. There were some little bins so people would kind of sit there and quietly eat like a snack. <laughs> I just want to preface this by saying, despite like how I am, I, I don't actually have a problem with being quiet, especially not when you're in a space which is designed for rest, relaxation, restoration, especially in the context of an airport, like people coming in from different time zones. And I think it's really great that they set these parameters so people know you have to be quiet. But I do feel like there was a missed opportunity here and we'll come back to that later. So once I had put my suitcase away and changed into my slippers, I continued through the premises. I was assigned to the girly pop section of the hotel. They also have like the non girly pop section of the hotel. And just as a general note, some capital hotels are gender specific and some are mixed and have gender specific floors. And then even, I think some have mixed floors as well, but it does depend. So just check when you book. So then I went through into the bathroom space, which was very large and very clean, had plenty of showers and toilets and amenities. We'll come back to those when we use them. Not that I vlogged my toilet experience. I mean, like shower anyway. And then there's a little connecting area that leads you through to all of the capsules as well as your personal capsule. And the actual capsule pod area itself is really dark and kind of moody, but there are lights along the floor along with numbers for all of the pods. So you can easily navigate, even though it is of course dark. Finally made it to my personal capsule, which I feel like looked really futuristic. The round spaceship sci-fi vibes with the glowing number, a little dents inside the walls, which effectively serve as your bedside table. I thought it looked pretty cool. Like in terms of what do I think of in my brain when I think of capsule hotel, this is, this is kind of it. And I thought the design with the soft warm lining, it was really simple, but I thought it was pretty nice. So I took my slippers off and climbed into my personal capsule, which was very easy because I was actually on the lower ground level. I didn't have to go up the little ladder or anything. And I had a little look in my tote bag. It had pajamas, a toothbrush and some toothpaste, a towel, and then also the rules for the capsule which were all honestly pretty easy to follow. I feel like I'm giving such teachers pet vibes being like, no, I love rules. Like they're so easy. <laughs> but apart from just having, you know, standard consideration and decorum that I hope everyone would have at any accommodation, especially shared accommodation like this. There are a couple that wouldn't necessarily be standard in a place like a hostel because of the fact that it's a capsule hotel at the airport. So one which I thought was kind of notable was not having any notifications or obviously alarms, which to be honest, I do think people just had their alarms on anyway because it's an airport and ultimately people want to make their flight. But it's something to consider. But I guess everyone is just riding on the fact that they're going to have that intuitive like waking up before you need to be somewhere like the internal alarm that you have of just airport anxiety or general anxiety but other rules included the no eating or drinking as well as the no talking which is why i'm doing this video in this format instead of vlogging it there now in terms of the spaciousness of the capsule i'm not someone who really has a difficulty with small spaces i don't have claustrophobia i thought it was pretty roomy i could sit up in the capsule and have space above my head and i could also lie down completely flat and not have my head or toes touch the top or bottom of the capsule so i felt like it was totally enough space for me but i do think level of comfort would vary from person to person. For reference, I'm just 5'6", so I'm not particularly tall, but I do feel like anyone kind of, I want to say like over 5'10", in terms of height, like that would probably feel cramped. But I had enough room to lie down, have my personal handbag and stuff inside the capsule with me and still be able to feel comfy. Speaking of comfy, the mattress. It was like a little firm, but I personally prefer a firm mattress. It's just, it was good. If you've ever slept on a Japanese style futon, it's not dissimilar to that, but maybe a little bit less plush, a little bit more firm, not as good as that. <laughs> it was fine. So after I got myself situated in my little capsule, I was like, oh, we are nowhere near bedtime. I'm gonna go back out into Narita Airport and like explore a little. Maybe have a nice little early dinner and then find somewhere to like put my laptop up and get some work done and have a little sippy or a little sweet treat, you know, just, like hang out a bit as you do sometimes in the airport when you have time to waste. Now I have to tell you that this experience, I think it made me a Narita airport hater. 
Now, it's not that serious, but as someone who enjoys traveling, I just, I do actually appreciate and enjoy a good airport and I, I don't think Dorita Airport is one of them. And maybe it's like weird of me that I kind of enjoy spending time at the airport, but you know, it's just so connected to like the excitement of travel. And oftentimes, you know, it's your last chance to buy some yummy snacks or to eat some food from a corporate restaurant chain that you enjoy. I don't know. <laughs> they had this, what I can only describe as like an anime pop-up exhibition, which <laughs> it was kind of like a big anime merch store with all of these like, cardboard cutouts of anime characters, which I was really amused by on my own because I'm very easily amused. So I entertained myself like mucking around a bit there for a bit, but then I was like, okay, it's much crunch time. Let's go get some Din Dins. And I think at this point it was around like 7.45. So I went to a place for some sushi, which was like good for airport sushi, probably a bit below average for Japan sushi, but still, you know, I wasn't mad. So I ate at the counter like a confident, secure solo diner. And then I was like, all right, let me grab my laptop and head to like a little cafe and have a little hot chocolate or a tea or like a little slice of cake or something yummy. Cause you know, the night is young, wrong. There was not a single place and I walked around and I looked and maybe I missed it, but I was just really shocked at the lack of places to sit with a surface. And you know, maybe it's a security thing or just like a cultural difference in urban design, airport design. And I know that for the most part, people don't like to hang out in airports. Like I, this isn't a normal activity for me. <laughs> but yeah, it was just so odd. So for this reason, I have to put in my formal review that Narita Airport is not, I repeat, not girl boss friendly. All I'm saying is that I was robbed of my Narita Airport while you work ambient noise ASMR experience. So after spending like way too much time walking around fruitlessly trying to find somewhere to just sit and work, I gave up <laughs> and I just went back to my capsule hotel, which as I hinted at before, also doesn't have a little common area. And I get that capsule hotels kind of by nature are quite utilitarian. I've stayed in these sort of like hostel type environments in Japan before and they had common areas with a vending machine, maybe like a hot water tap where you can make some noodles or something like that. And I just think, especially given the options at Narita Airport, like this is a missed opportunity. This is something they can tap into. Like people coming in really jet lagged and you having like a massive vending machine of comfort food. I think that, I think there's money to be made. I might be onto something. I'm free for consulting, please let me know. But they didn't have that. So I just decided to have a shower and get ready for bed. <laughs> I will say the shower facilities and honestly the whole hotel was really nice and clean, which I do think is a massive priority. And honestly, after a day of exploring quite a warm Tokyo and kind of running around the airport and things, it was really nice to have a nice clean shower and really freshen up. They had full shampoo, conditioner, hair dryers. So the whole space was really like nicely equipped and set up and again, clean. Then I put on my provided pajamas, which were certainly a pair of free pajamas. Uh, you know, it's a nice option to have so that you can change into something clean to prevent your clothes from getting dirtier or having to look around in your suitcase. Like it's a nice, nice to have thing. And then I just awkwardly sat sideways in my pod and continued working. The Wi-Fi was solid, no complaints there. It was a bit ergonomically cursed, but like I said, there was nowhere else for me to go. So this was my only remaining option. Now, importantly, the capsules have these little pull down blind doors. So you can have your privacy in your pod, but pulling them down does quickly make your pod feel quite stuffy. So initially I had it closed while I was working because I was like, okay, closing the pod. But then it got really stuffy. So then I opened it back up because I wasn't making any noise. And then I had my airflow back in and I was like, okay, I'll just do this until I go to sleep and then I'll close it as I'm going to sleep. And at this point, I have to confess to you that uh, while I was working, um, I did fall asleep <laughs> with the, the door open. Like I moved from like a sitting up position to like the, you know, lying on your side position to then obviously falling asleep. So I, I don't exactly remember, but I fell asleep with the blind open and I woke up a short time later to see that someone had closed the blind. And I know something about myself and it's that I am an ugly sleeper. So, so someone was subjected to seeing that and that is embarrassing. <laughs> really, really cool of me. Uh, then, you know, I actually went to sleep for realsies this time and then I woke up and that was it. That was my night in a capsule hotel. And overall it was 
good. I think if you're in the position where you have an early flight or you're connecting somewhere and you just want like a few hours to maybe freshen up, have a shower, get maybe a little bit of a nap in, I think that it's totally worth it. And especially for Narita Airport, I think nine hours is like the closest to the terminal, like it's basically underneath the terminal. But if you're not staying at the airport and you're thinking about a capsule hotel as an accommodation option, I haven't stayed at any of the other ones. I know there are some that offer really unique kind of experiences. And honestly, I think if it's something you're interested in and want to experience, it's worth a try, especially if you just do it for one night. If you're just generally looking for budget accommodation, I do think there are plenty of budget options which maybe offer a little bit better value for money or just don't have the drawbacks of the specific capsule hotel experience. <laughs> like there are some amazing hostels and hotels that are really great budget options that will still give you that cool experience minus the niche downsides of a capsule hotel. <laughs> but let me know what you think. Have you ever stayed in a capsule hotel? And then follow up question, do you want to stay in a capsule hotel? Or do you have like a really cool accommodation option that you have as your like ultimate travel wish list? I want to know. Let me know. A big thank you again to Zenpop for sponsoring this video and supporting the channel. As always, thank you so, so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.